Greetings to everyone. We are here once again to discuss cases that may not matter to us today, but who knows, it will someday. I have here with me our fellows who are also studying law at the Rizal Memorial Colleges. Again, we welcome you today as we are going to learn something new here in Legal Express. I am Bernie Calceta. With me are my fellows, Carmelia Arceo, Arnelio Arnuco, Melani Corre, Edeline Derecho, Caroline Davin Domingo, Robert Mutia, Neil John Balyar, and Mr. Fernando Cruz III. So, what do we have for this day? Take it away, Mr. Cruz. Thank you, ma'am. We'll be having the case of Alawi versus Alauya, 268-SCRA-628, uh, docketed as AMSDC-97-2-P, promulgated on February 27, uh, 24, 1997. Sophia Alawi, the complainant. Ashari M. Alauya, Clerk of Court 6, Sharia District Court, Maroy City, the respondent. So let's hear from Ms. Domingo for the facts. Okay, for the facts, Sophia Alawi was a sales representative of EB with the Rosan Partners Company LTD of Davao City, a real estate and housing company. Ashari M. Alauya was the incumbent executive clerk of, of court of the 4th Judicial Sharia's, Sharia's District in Marawi City. They were classmates and used to be friends before. Please proceed, Mr. Arnuko. Thank you, ma'am. Through Alawi's agency, a contract was executed for the purchase on installments by Alawiya of one of the housing units of Villarosa. In connection, a housing loan was also granted to Alawiya by the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation for N. HMFC. Now let's hear from Mr. Valiar. So here is the thing. Not long afterwards, Alawia addressed a letter to the president of the Villarosa and Company advising the termination of his contract with a company represented by Sophia Alawi, with the grounds that his consent was vitiated by gross misrepresentation, deceit, fraud, dishonesty, and abuse of confidence by Sophia Alawi, which made the said contract void ab initio. Mr. Alaoya also sent a copy of the letter to the Vice President of Villarosa and Company at San Pedro, Gusa, Cagayan de Oro City. Let's hear again from Mr. Cruz. On learning of Alauya's letter to Villarosa and Co. of December 15, 1995, Sophia Alawi filed with this court a verified complaint dated January 25, 1996. In that complaint, she accused Alauya of imputation of malicious and libelous charges with no solid grounds through manifest ignorance and evident bad faith. Number two, causing undue injury to and blemishing her honor and established reputation. Number three, an un unauthorized enjoyment of the privilege of free postage. And number four, the usurpation of the title of attorney, which only regular members of the Philippine Bar may properly use. Now let's listen to Ms. Derecho. As regards... For Miss Derecho. Alauya justified his use of the title attorney by the assertion that it is basically synonymous with counselors of law, a title to which Sharia lawyers have a rightful claim, adding that he prefers the title of attorney because. Counselor is often mistaken for counselor, concihal, or the Maranong term concihal, connoting a local legislator beholden to the mayor, which he does not consider himself a lawyer. So, for the issue, whether or not Alauya, a member of the Sha'ira Bar, can use the title of attorney, before we will discuss further the case and answer the issue, 
may we have Miss Colleen and Corey to help us understand uh, the some words that we have used a while ago. So words to ponder now, ladies. Take it away. So the question is, what is Sharia? Now, basically, Sharia is an Arabic um, term, which means the way, and does not refer to a body of law. Sharia is more accurately understood as referring to wide-ranging moral and broad ethical principles drawn from the Quran and the practices and sayings of Prophet Muhammad. These broad principles are interpreted by jurists to come up with specific legal rulings and moral prescriptions. The body of legal rulings that emerges from the interpretation of Sharia law is commonly referred to as Islamic law or as fiqh in Arabic. It is the result of human intellectual activity and is therefore by definition fallible and changeable. Now Sharia or Islamic law is partially implemented in the legal system of the Philippines and is applicable only to Muslims. Sharia courts in the country are under supervision of the Supreme Court and also Sharia courts in the Philippines has jurisdiction over Muslims, majority Bangsa Moro, as well as other parts of Mindanao outside of the autonomous region. So in this case, a Shari Alaoya should only be addressed as counselor at law and not as an attorney for the reason of him not being part of the Philippine bar. As it was said, no person who passed the Sharia bar are not full-fledged members of the Philippine bar, hence may practice only at the Sharia courts. Thank you. Hi everyone, as we heard the words consent, initiated, and usurpation in this case, let me share to you some short definition of such words and hope this will add up to your vocabulary. The first word is consent. Consent in legal term is defined as a voluntary agreement by a person of age or which requisite mental capacity who is not under coercion and usually who has knowledge or understanding in approval of what is done or proposed by another. The second word is vitiated. Vitiated means the being impaired or destroyed or annulled completely or partially, the force and effect of an act or in instrument. And the third one is the usurpation. Usurpation means the illegal encroachment or assumption of the use of authority, power or property properly belonging to another, the interruption or disturbance of an individual in his or her right or procession. Thank you for that, ladies. So let's go back to our issue. Our issue was whether or not a member of a Sha'ira bar who is a liar can use the title of attorney. He can't. Why? The title is only reserved to those who pass the regular Philippine bar. In order for us to understand more, may we hear again from Ms. Derecho? As regards Alauya's use of the title of attorney, this court has already had occasion to declare that persons who pass the Sharia bar are not full fledged members of the Philippine bar. Hence, may only practice law before Sharia court. Let me hear again. Let us hear again from Mr. Cruz. Thank you, ma'am. May I add that while one who has been admitted to the Sharia bar and one who has admitted to the Philippine bar may both be considered counselors in the sense that they give counsel or advice in a professional capacity, but only the latter is an attorney. I agree. I agree that the title attorney is reserved to those who, having obtained the necessary degree in the study of law and successfully taken the bar examinations have been admitted to the integrated bar of the Philippines and remain members thereof in good standing and is the only who are authorized to practice law in this jurisdiction. Now for additional inputs and for the ruling, let's hear from Mr. Mutya. Thank you. In addition to this, it is also important to know that Alawya has also violated the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees, particularly Section 4, 
which states that public officials and employees at all times take note for those who are, for those future lawyers who are planning to work in the public. It says that at all times should respect the rights of others and refrain from doing acts contrary to law, public order, public safety, and public interest. Because of that, a lawyer's use of excessively intemperate and insulting language. Again, Sophia Alawi, he was reprimanded by the Supreme Court. Wow. Thank you for that, future panieros and panieras. Hope our listeners, hope you have learned something today. So let's call it a day, friends. Till next time. For yesterday, you don't know. Now you know it here at Legal Express. So thank you and Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.